The Toronto Blue Jays and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. have yet to come to an agreement on a contract arbitration deal, and it's pretty scary for Jays fans. And honestly, the way that this whole situation is playing out with him and Bo Bichette not having signed a contract extension, it could threaten the entire future of the organization. So we'll break that down and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Now, we're waiting for the news to come out on the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. arbitration hearing. He filed at $19.9 million, and the Blue Jays filed at around 18. So there's a pretty big discrepancy in between those two numbers. And we saw it last year between the Mariners and the Teoscar Hernandez. There was a $1.5 million difference. We saw it last year with the Blue Jays and Bo Bichette, and they ended up uh, coming to terms on a three-year deal that bought out the rest of the arbitration year for for Bo Bichette. So this whole situation, I, I hate it. I've been very vocal about it in the past, just arbitration and and teams having to kind of throw you under the bus and, and say why you're not worth what you think you're worth. And then you they expect you to line up and give it your all come opening day. I'll tell you what, for $19.9 million or, or even $18 million, I'd give it my all, and, and I'd give it even more than that. But this is different. I'm not a professional athlete, and there are different levels to this. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr., I think he's a big part of the future of the Toronto Blue Jays. I really do. Even though he struggled in the past couple of seasons, I believe that he's got a place on this team long term. And the Blue Jays will go as far as he takes them. If he performs, I think they'll perform up to their standard. And if he doesn't perform, which he hasn't in the past two years, I believe that we'll be talking about another subpar season and another early playoff exit. But Nick, this could really alter the next five to ten years of the Toronto Blue Jays franchise if these two sides cannot come to an agreement. And right now they haven't. I'm still holding out hope that they can maybe sign a deal, a long-term deal. We saw Bobby Witt Jr. sign an 11-year deal with the Kansas City Royals the other day. I'm waiting for this to happen. I, I want it to happen, and I'm just on the edge of my seat waiting for something here. Yeah, we've seen all these young players sign big extensions. You look at all of them, and the Jays have yet to make any. Quick reminder to hit the subscribe button before we get into it. Uh, we're on the road to 12,000. 70% of you who are watching aren't subscribed, 72.7%. So make sure to do that. But like you said, um, this is getting interesting now. We're all familiar with the fact that as we speak, they're still in arbitration talkings or ta- uh, conversations. And Ben Nichols has said there's no exact timeline uh, for when the decisions will leak publicly. But some people say that based on previous cases, later today we could get some news. So comment down below if you end up uh, finding out if whether it wins or loses. We'll cover it in tomorrow's video regardless. But you mentioned it, Peter, about a $2 million or $1.8 million difference there between the Jays and Vladdy. But the bigger conversation is, is kind of the fact that it even came to this. And the fact that they haven't had an extension with Vladdy yet. And I understand the reason why they haven't. It's because of his poor season last year. And probably it's for best for both sides that they didn't do it right now. But looking at this, the Jays need to get something done with their core. Whether that's Vladdy, whether that's Bo. Get one of them extended. I'd be more willing to extend Bo personally right now. But the future, and depending how this goes, we've seen kind of instances in the past where this could really affect the relationship between a team and a player. Obviously, Tosker left the Mariners after they failed to come to an agreement, so a bit of a different story, but this could jeopardize the, the Jays' future to a degree, even if it means just a little bit of bad blood between them when trying to negotiate a contract going forward. We saw with Manoa as well way back. Yeah, well, we thought that it, it would jeopardize the Blue Jays and Bobichette last season. It ended up working out. They bought out the remaining three years of his arbitration, so that worked out perfectly. What I would have loved to have seen them do is sign him to a 10-year deal, and we don't have to worry about this in two years' time when he's a free agent, but that's not the case. And obviously, it's better than going to arbitration every year with your best player with your best hitter so I I like that they did that but same thing with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I think he I mean yeah sure the Blue Jays have underperformed in the past few seasons and and so is he and he's been a big reason as to why that they failed to meet expectations but he's still one of your best players and he's still one of the best young players in baseball he's 25 years old we're looking at all these 30 year olds hit the market and they're getting $300 $300 million, what do you think Gladdy is going to get? What do you think Bo is going to get when he hits the open market? Maybe not $300 million because those are the top, top, top tier players. And it's up to you whether you consider Vladdy and Bo those top tier players. But still, they're going to get something close to that just because of the production that they've had earlier in their careers and the 
age that they're presenting. Vlad is 25. He's going to hit free agency when he's 27. Same thing with Bo Bichette. He's going to hit free agency when he's 26 or, or 27. So that's prime years right there. You're, you're getting guys in their prime that have been very successful over the course of their young careers thus far. And that's going to cost you. It, it doesn't matter what position they play. It doesn't matter how they perform the, in, in the years prior. They're young. They're talented. And they're very good players, and they've shown that. So get something done here. I'm tired of the Blue Jays walking the line and, and just kind of trying their luck when it comes to free agency. You can't really chance it when it comes to players of this caliber, and I want to see them get something done here. Yeah, I'm looking at Vladdy's projections. So these are the Steamers' home run projections for 2024. And this kind of goes into the fact that and we can have a whole conversation about how good the Jays should be next year even with the the minimal acquisitions they've made. But Vladdy's at 36 projected home runs, which is still not even that high, but it's definitely higher than last year. Then you have George, big bounce back, Bo, Versho. But the big one here is Vladdy and Bo, obviously. I mean, Vladdy's coming off of a season where he did not hit many home runs at all. He had a very poor offensive season given his um, expectations. 36 home runs, and you look at his Zips projections, all the different ones here, 31 home runs, 89 RBIs. Now, uh, Peter... I think we all uh, can agree. I think Vladdy's going to have a very good year next year. And I also think that Bo Bichette, I mean, Bo Bichette's been consistent his whole, he actually had a very major improvement last year. Probably the biggest improvement, especially on the defensive end. Offensive kind of stayed around the same. But I think they need to lock up Bo especially. But Vladdy as well, someone is going to pay Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in the open market 300 plus million, you would assume, unless he has another poor year. But Bo Bichette, you can almost guarantee if he hit the market right now, he gets somewhere close to that. We saw Bobby Witt without even having a... Uh, one or two years under his belt, he's a, has a chance to make upwards of 377 or something like that, something crazy. The Jays need to do something else. What are we going to do when they all leave? Our team's not getting necessarily younger at all. We have a lot of aging players, specifically in the pitching staff, but we have prospects coming up. Uh, they need to do something, and the future of this team is in the hands of them extending one of these guys, if not both of them, depending on how Vladdy does, obviously. But Boba Shett's the big one for me, but we're focusing on Vladdy today, so I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah. I think it's. Um, I, I think you got to sign both of them, yeah. and I'm saying that because the top 100 prospects came out the other day, and the Blue Jays have the least amount of top 100 prospects in the AL East. The Baltimore Orioles shipped out a couple, and they still have four. The the Yankees have four, uh, and obviously that could be biased. That could be some Yankees bias over there. You know the reporters love them, but still the Blue Jays have two top 100 prospects, and the cupboard is pretty bare. It's not. There's not much there besides Arelvis Martinez, Ricky Tiedemann, and maybe some long shots like Arjun Namala and uh, and uh, who Brandon Barrier, Emmanuel Bonilla, Eman- Emmanuel Bonilla, Brandon Barrier. But those guys are a ways away from the big leagues. You only have two guys that are really ready to come in and make an impact, and that's Ricky Tiedemann and Arelvis Martinez. You could throw Addison Barger in the mix if you want, but he's not really highly touted as those guys. So, yeah, the, the cupboards are bare, and the Blue Jays need to lock these two guys up because they have prospects that are older than them. That That's how good that they've been early on in their, in their young careers, and you're not going to hit the ground running right away unless you're generational and – Vladdy did hit the ground running in that uh, in his age 22 season. He was great. Hit 48 home runs and and drove in nearly 120. He had an OPS over a thousand. Like he was a superstar hitter, poised to make 300, 400 million dollars on the open market. And right now, both sides are taking a gamble. The Blue Jays are gambling that they're going to be able to get him for cheap once his arbitration years are done. And Vladdy's taking a gamble that he's going to bounce back and have that MVP caliber type impact that he did early in his career and then bank in on that $300, $400 million deal that I'm sure he desperately wants in free agency. So it's a gamble from both sides, but I say you meet somewhere in the middle and you say, hey, we want you to be a Blue Jay long term. We want you here for the long haul. We think you're a big part of the solution of this franchise. Don't go anywhere. We're going to sign you $250, $280 million with incentives like the Mariners did with Julio Rodriguez, like the Royals did with Bobby Witt Jr. So you look at all those deals that those young players are signing before getting too much major league experience, and and it's it's paying off so far. Bobby Witt Jr. is one of the best young players in baseball. You can say the same thing with Julio Rodriguez, and it's working out beautifully for those sort of small market teams the royals uh gave the biggest contract in their history to bobby witt jr before even playing 
300 games at the big league level. And I'm sure the Mariners just did the same thing with Julio. So why not lock up your young stars? The game is changing and they're going to take you in the right direction eventually. At least I believe so. They're that talented. Yeah. And we also have to keep in mind who has the work for both sides. Who knows if Bo Bichette and them even want to take a contract. Maybe they don't want to end up in or stay in Toronto. That's obviously a part to keep in mind as well, but that's something we'll definitely keep an eye on. And, Hopefully, uh, Vladdy and the Jason come to an agreement. But that will wrap it up. If you want to check out our video from yesterday, click on your screen now. Hopefully, Peter, this goes uh, well for the Jays, and tomorrow we'll have some sort of positive update to share with you all. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.